Salut, c'est Jesse de Masquis. I'm Dark Star Movie 101, and who enjoys a good amagram? I know it's a weird topic, but stay with me. Don't go. No, I see you getting out of your chair. Fucking stay where you are. Bear with me. Let's start with an anagram that confused a lot of you, probably. Ellsworth starves whitetails. It's an anagram of let's start this with you, shall we? Uh, two milkmen go comedy? If you're a Zero Escape fan, you'll know that it translates to Welcome to My Kingdom. And then, of course, we end up with Deltarune. Which, as I'm pretty sure everyone knows at this point, is an anagram of Undertale. Deltarune is also the symbol of the Monster Kingdom from Undertale, which is kind of an overt way of saying Deltarune probably has something to do with Undertale. Well, shit, Toby, what the fuck are you up to now? If you don't follow the Undertale Twitter account, which why would you, the game's been out for three years at this point, you might have missed that leading up to Halloween there were some curious tweets coming from it. All of this leading up to the release of this curious file. Now, before we start, I want you to keep in mind that Deltarune is comes with a disclaimer that it's made for people who finished or completed Undertale in mind. So it's it's not a sequel yet. We don't know that yet. It's a relative, to say the least, of Undertale. So with all that in mind, it's probably best that you play Undertale first before watching anything to do with Deltarune. Mind you, I'm not going to go into the story details of the game today, so I'll get into that later, so you can watch this review before you actually play Delta Room, but play Undertale first, okay? Do yourself a favour. Initially opening up with the premise of a survey, the game presents you with a character creation menu before, in true Turby Fox style, the rock gets pulled out from under you, your creation is discarded, and you're dropped into the actual game. Which, as you can probably tell, is done in the exact same style as Undertale because that's just how Toby designs games. I can't quite decide if there's more detail in the style of Deltarune or if just some of the character sprites are taller. I just, you know, it's, you get more to work with if the character's taller and not a squashed potato like Frisk was. Regardless, the design of Deltarune is just as memorable as that of Undertale. Although, if I'm 100% honest, the design from the Dark Kingdom feels a little off to me, I don't know. I think it might be because the world of Undertale was mostly set around things I can kind of get my head around. Which makes sense considering how the Underground was still a part of our world, and the Kingdom of Dark is just sort of not. So I guess it's just a look at how Deltarune is a step further away from our reality when compared to Undertale. I mean, it kind of makes sense when you think about it. I mean, in the Dark, Chris is fucking blue, so unless he's asphyxiated and the dark is a metaphor for death and or dying, I don't think it's real. I have probably just spawned a bunch of different fan theories just from that one little question alone. Fuck! The score to this game, by the way, is just as great as Undertale. I mean, we've not had any super catchy tracks like Megalovania yet, but it's all great 8-bit game music and I love it. And I guess you can say that I love the characters in Deltarune. I mean, there wasn't a town in the dark like Snowden or whatever, but there's no sense of civilization. But Lance is a great comedic foil, Susie is Ultimate Edge Lady, the King of Spades seems to be an interesting flip on the character of Asgore for those looking at parallels. I mean, there aren't that many characters to talk about in this game as of yet, it's still only the first chapter. I guess there'll be more characters introduced with later chapters. We've already met the King of Spades and the Jack of Spades in Lancer, there's bound to be more. One character I'm not sure of at the moment is Ralsei. Ralsei introduces himself as a Prince of the Dark and is the first character we probably meet in the Dark. He's the one to teach us about how to battle. He also states that as a Prince of Dark he's necessary to help us, Chris and Susie, save the world. It feels very, very similar to how Altis tried to insert herself into Frisk's story in Undertale, but also really similar to how Flowey tried to manipulate the events of Undertale to his favour. Heck, Ralsei even tells you flat out you must get the pacifist ending in much the same way that Flowey does. I, I'm sorry, I just cannot trust Ralsei and the entire Deltarune fandom, because it's already happened, because the Undertale fandom's like, yes, more of this, we now become the Deltarune fandom! They've already adopted the fluffy boy that is Ralsei, making the fan art and 
saying they would die for Ralph's sake, and here I am, going, excuse me, he's the first thing we met in the dark, and you remember the first thing we met in Undertale? That was a golden flower, and it immediately tried to kill us. A flower tried to kill us. This I do not trust Ralph's sake in the fucking slightest. My misgivings, however, about Ralph's Day are completely made up for with the introduction of this glorious fucking shitbird. Rules. Card. Oh. My. Fucking God. I cannot over-exaggerate how glorious this lunatic, this ridiculously useless character is. Rules Card is supposedly the greatest puzzle master in the dark, and my God, that overconfidence, the butchered Elizabethan English, the absolutely dog shit puzzles, that fucking face. I love him so much. I love this absolute shitbird. I call him Kokichi. Swear to fucking God, card draws power from pure fucking bullshit. And that is the best source of energy. I wish I'd had a chance to actually fight Card, because the combat system in Deltarune really leans into the turn-based combat from Undertale. The RPG aspects seem to be a little held back, because there's no mention of EXP in love. I mean, EXP is mentioned in that you don't get any, but still. I never really looked into actually fighting anyway, because I wanted to see what was so interesting about the passive ending Ralph State wanted us to get. Anyway, in addition to fighting, acting, using items, and sparing your enemies in this game, you can also command your party members to fight, use magic, and items, and spare enemies as well. You can even act in coordination with one or both of Susie and Ralphie to try and get multiple enemies to be spared at once. And the fact that you can use your party members to spare enemies means you can end the battle on the turn you get all enemies to stop fighting, rather than having to spare them individually, like in Undertale. It's more or less the same system, but it's an evolved form. It's also an evolved form in the out-of-combat threats as well. In Undertale, when you encountered a potential source of damage outside a battle, you'd have a sort of mini-battle where you'd be in the combat box and you'd have to dodge the attack. In Deltarune, however, everyone stays in the same plane of the world and Chris' soul becomes visible to take damage, and you just have to dodge the attack. I don't really think that the combat from Undertale could really be built upon, but damn it, Toby just went and proved me wrong. The story of Deltarune, it's kind of hard to go into at this point. I suppose you could say that this would be like the ruins portion of Undertale, which I guess would ultimately lead Deltarune to being a four, maybe five chapter story. Because it's only the first chapter of the game though, I think it'd be wrong to really judge this game based on this single adventure that Chris and Susie end up going on with Ralsei and Lancer. There will be more adventures, sure, because Chris and Susie haven't saved the world yet, but they'll get there. It's just going to be one of those stories where they go in and out of the magical world wherever they fucking want to. So it's kind of like Digimon Adventure vs Digimon 02. Digimon Adventure, there was no like real guarantee that we're going to get home safe and that was just a quest towards, you know, the end of the anime. In Digimon 102, they can fucking pop back whenever they want, and that sort of stake is gone, but that's not really the stakes that were being set up. I'm not going to give Delta Rune a dark rated today either. Like I said, it's not a full game yet, it's just the first part of the story, but I am intrigued. There's a lot of story beats in the game that have been laid out, so I'm looking forward to seeing where they go next. And if you've watched this review about playing Delta Rune, I highly recommend it because of right now, this game is free! It's free to play this game right now. No money's needed. Zero pounds. No dollars. Maybe a bitcoin. Maybe two bitcoins. I don't fucking know what a bitcoin is. So, like I said, I'm interested to see where this game goes in the future. And you know, I think I'm gonna do a Chris and just pop into. Chris. You, you all right, buddy? Jesus fuck Okay, I, I see Toby. Alright. 
I shouldn't have been really that suspicious of Ralsei, should I? Ralsei wasn't the one I should have been suspicious of. Right? Kara? Uh, 